Okay, let's do a test on this. Use my handy saw bench here. And just so there's no thought of cheating, we're gonna put it back onto the saw that we did the original test on. No sleight of hand, I'm not changing blades. This is, this is the carbide blade here. This one is a steel tooth blade. That's the one we cut this really nice side over here. This is the carbide blade that we cut this side with. Burned it. Now to see if we've made a difference, we'll just change out the blade. I do like having that arbor lock. Coffee. really only 8.30 here. I wouldn't have gotten up and even started yet. There we go. Hard to tell the difference, isn't it? Oh, no, it isn't. Got those carbide teeth raised on there. So we'll put the steel blade over there. Slip on the carbide blade. on the washers, D-shaped, you got to have it lined up with a D. I'm not sure why, must be something about the way the blade is clamped in between those two washers that does the driving, because there is no D in the blade. Now on the worm drive saw, it actually has a diamond in it, because that, that baby makes some torque. This is a 17 millimeter bolt, and that's all cool and everything, but it's 17 millimeters with rounded edges. And this 17 millimeter wrench, which I got at Princess Auto up in Canada when I was working up in Barrie, Ontario. Wonderful city, you ought to, all ought to visit there. Don't bother. Sorry, Canadians. Barrie, Ontario sucks. It's a long drive from anywhere and it doesn't have much. Okay. There we have our sample. I have my coffee. I'm going to finish my coffee because I'm going to make sawdust. Sawdust lands in everything and I don't want to have my coffee filled with sawdust. Oh. Even with powdered creamer, it's good. Okay, we have the blade changed out. Get the cord unwrapped. Like this little thing. Works really good. And loosen up. table down all the way. Now this is a nicely clean saw. So it should work just peachy. Because I went through and polished it all up. Doesn't really make much difference to the saw. The saw doesn't care. But it just shows respect for your tools. And we're all about respect for our tools. Okay, Sally, I'm going to don all my protective gear, all my stuff, because I don't want anything to hit me in the face, and I definitely don't want to go deaf. Hearing protection. What? Yeah, hearing protection.
Yep, you can't see what I'm doing. Right now, I've got a chainsaw out and I'm cutting this piece of wood just to make it look funny. Oh, we still burned. Not as bad, but we still burned. Son of a gun, not sharp enough. Okay, it all looks easy, but it ain't. This is the one I cut the first time with a dull blade. This is after I sharpened it a bit. Evidently haven't got it all the way sharp. So how do we solve that problem? Why, we just sharpen it again. Nice thing about being able to do this in your own home, it doesn't work the first time. If at first you don't succeed, just give it another shot. Now I could be a jerk and blame the diamond, but I'm not. My skill set isn't up to the task yet. Okay. Still got the camera running up here. Maybe I need to take a path across the front of this tooth. So we'll set it up and take a pass across the front of the tooth. Okay guys, I'm having trouble seeing this one. So I'm gonna go out and grab the daikon. Looks like a saw out of a chainsaw massacre movie. Like I'm dripping off of it. Okay. Now, one nice thing about Dykem, it does dry off quickly.
and it gets on your fingers. So you walk around the rest of the day with blue on your fingers and look a little bit on my arm. Didn't get any on my pants. That's amazing. Okay, cool. So now, the front of the teeth appear to have a bit of an angle too. Not very much. Yeah, I'm able to go right across the face of it. That works better. My finger just leaves a black streak on it. it makes it. Oh, that's because there's schmutz on the diamond. That's the carbide. Oh, shiny. think spots where the plastic comes through the diamond plate and locks it in place they make it bump so as I'm going along this thing you can hear it going brr, brr. I would much rather have a file that didn't have the bumps on it and I'm trying to hit the flash Hear that when it catches? This is my first time doing this, guys, so bear with me. I want to set this on there so that it doesn't rock. It kind of registers on the face of the carbide. And then I look at it to make sure I've shined it up on both edges. They must have used a wheel with a little bit of curve in it because I'm showing shine on both edges before I show shine in the middle. Show shine. Yeah. Anybody remember Joe Lieberman? Yeah, Joe Lieberman. Joe Mentum. This is show Mentum. getting the hang of it guys. And I'm hoping that after I've done this it's gonna cut like butter. What do you think? Is that gonna happen? I think in the interest of keeping my diamond file working I'm gonna want to do some saws on this side and some saws on the other side just so that I get to use the other side of the diamond. Otherwise, I will wear out my diamond on one side and not be able to use it. Right 
register on the carbide, stroke across. This is my last tooth. Okay. We have done the whole thing over again. Now I've sharpened the top of the tooth and I've sharpened the face of the tooth. Well, they're all, well, they're all pointy, but they're not sticky sharp. When I sharpen a steel blade, the point is usually pretty pointy. This one, not so much. And I followed the angles that they were there. I might have rounded them over just a little bit. Not using a precision tool, I just got dos manos. And working with that, Let's see what happens. Now the only other thing that I could see is if I have to do the side of the teeth. And that could be because the sides of the teeth have dulled down. But I thought if I went across the face, that gets both sides and the top. Now, the teeth appear to be whiter at the tip than they are at the bottom. So, I would think that would act as set. Let's get the micrometer out and just see what the difference that makes. This is my Mad Max set of micrometers. They're Mitutoyus, which are actually a pretty good micrometer. But they're digital. Digital from 1960. Actually, I think they're about 1990. 92? Yeah, 1990, somewhere around in there. Anyways, the digital part broke. It no longer reads in digital. And that's too bad because this has a special little port here that lets it hook up to an uh, automatic recording system so that you could measure things and it recorded it and put it into a database and the operator could just not have to know what they were doing. All they had to do is just turn the thing and it even had a little ratchet button here so they don't have to know how to feel it. They just put it on there and ratchet the thing and it says, oh, this is this size. But when that went out, the operators could no longer use it because they're not trained in how to use a micrometer. But the barrel, which is, relies on a good old Archimedean screw, is still just fine. Out here at the tip, this carbide bit is 94 thousandths thick. Down here at the bottom, Oh, look at that. It's 87 thousandths thick. So this tooth is keystone shaped. It's whiter at the top than it is at the bottom. That gives it basically the set. So if, the, if these two edges up here are sharp, I shouldn't burn anymore. We'll test that to see. At this point, that is a theory. We don't have any proof. Same block of oak. I was wise enough to keep that block of oak sitting around. Okay. That's ready to go. That's the blade on. Saw plugged in. Move this over out of the way just so I don't spill any water on anything. There. I'm going to set this back up and get it out of the way just so that I don't have a problem later. 
I have a problem now. I'm out of coffee. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to finish this job and we're going to carry on like we know what we're doing. Okay. We have the saw ready. We have the block ready. Ready on the right flank. Ready on the left flank. Ready on the firing line. Yep. Don't worry, ma'am. We're all safe and secure here. We've got on our stuff. Well, would you look at that? That's right off the saw, baby. This is from my first one from this morning after the sharpening just the tips of the blade. Saw's unplugged, we're all safe, don't worry. This is the blade just as it came, just after I finished cleaning it up. I uh, hadn't done any sharpening to it at all. Kind of burnt and smeared all the way across the part. Then this is after I sharpened just the tips of the teeth. Can you see that? Yep, pretty well burnt. This is after I sharpen the tips and the face. Well, that's a pretty good test of it. Just exactly how much it can make a difference. Spider. Don't like spiders. All you Spider-Man fans out there, not a big fan. Don't like spiders. So I think that's a pretty good test of whether you can sharpen a carbide blade with a diamond file. Looks like I had pretty good success. Now I think as time goes on I will get better, but I don't do that many carbide blades. And this was a pretty ragged one. If you remember it was rusty, really crappy, and it's missing a tooth. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to make this work better, because I think it works pretty good now. I mean, for what it's for, which is cutting up rough lumber with uh, nails and crap in it. That saw blade is going to do just fine now. So this little diamond file worked pretty good. I think it sharpened the saw just fine. Got my coffee finished. I think it's time to sit down and edit this video for you guys. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you. If you're a new viewer, thank you very much for stopping by. And 
We're here every day, Monday through Friday at noon, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. Since you're already here, why not take a second and hit the subscribe button? Don't forget to touch the like too. That always tells me which ones you like best. Hopefully this one's a favorite. Thanks for watching.